there's an unsustainable consumption pattern that's happening. You know, we talk about fast fashion, but fast tech, right? At Fairphone, we strongly believe that we want our business to be a force for good. And for us, that means both uh, environmentally, socially, but also financially. Maybe it's coming off the pandemic, but I think the timing that is really right for these products, and I think it's it's good for our company, but I think more importantly, I think it's good for the environment. If you're not considering social and environmental impacts when you're making business decisions, then you're not making fully informed business decisions. The electronics industry is notorious for making thin, light, capable machines. When, you know, mobile computing started in the 80s, it wasn't something that came into the consciousness of corporations. You know, maybe we should think about the fact that this cobalt mine is in a place that may use a lot of child labor, may use a lot of unclean energy to get it out of the earth. We still want thin, light, fast devices, but there's a growing movement that is really interested in how sustainable something is. In our view, the, the rapid life cycles and the short lifetime of devices actually is the main problem. Um, designing a device that is meant to last and also building the ecosystem around it that actually a device can last longer by introducing this longer term vision. Um, yeah, you also start immediately tackling problems, not only for the planet, but also for the people in this, uh, in this supply chain. If you look at mobile products, about 80% of the life cycle greenhouse gas impacts, all the way from raw material extraction through production to use and then back around again, is in production. And so it, it doesn't make sense, you know, to be throwing these things away. I sat down with Mark Newton, who is the head of sustainability for Samsung. Now, Samsung is a massive company. They don't just make smartphones and refrigerators and washing machines and home appliances. They also make semiconductors. They make battery packs for electric vehicles. They're a tremendous company. Their goals are pretty aggressive. So by 2030, they want to become net zero with consumer electronics. They have manufacturing plants, they have locations all over the world. And that means that in order to become net zero, they have to essentially work with each individual country to raise up the infrastructure. Essentially, Samsung is, is sort of planting the flag and saying, okay, you know, we're gonna do this and we're gonna make this happen. Sustainability, is crucial for tech because of the level of consumption uh, and how integrated tech is into our everyday lives. You know, the most sustainable phone is the one that's in your pocket. It's the one that you can use and repair and change and swap and customize as technology gets better. Fairphone is a company that started in 2013, and their whole model is essentially to provide a smartphone experience that you know looks very similar to, say, your iPhone in your pocket, that incorporates sustainability, recyclability, repairability, and even ensuring fair wages for workers. Every year we sell and buy, therefore, 1.4 billion smartphones worldwide. And uh, we use them uh, yeah, around two to three years. And then after use, less than 20% actually is handed in for recycling. It's actually a huge waste machine. Plus also these rapid life cycles, and you can imagine the effect it has on CO2 and material use, but also this short-term focus is quite a big influence on the people working in this supply chain. They're doing something in this space, trying to innovate for long enough that larger companies are coming to them and being like, okay, well, what have you learned? How did you do this? <laughs> the small part that you see here, it makes your phone shake, and that's made of 
tungsten from here. What can we learn from you so that we can incorporate more sustainable products? You wanted compromise to be as small as possible because for me, my goal as Fairphone is I want my users that they love to keep their phone in use longer. Yet for me, what is beautiful? Is it beautiful that it's just thin, thinner, thinnest? Or is it actually beautiful that you say, hey, there's a design ID behind this that cares for the materials, for the people working in this supply chain and for the environment? Acer is interesting because they're known mostly for gaming computers. They offer a lot of really innovative stuff in that space. They also work in Chromebooks, things that kids use at schools. They're launching their very first sort of 30% post-consumer recycled laptop called the Vero. We've made sure that it is user upgradable. So it's pretty easy to pop in more memory or in a gaming laptop to put a different ga uh, graphic processor in. So we're, I consider that table stakes today where the customers want that. And the idea is over time, there's no premium. You know, it's chicken and the egg as you get scale and you get your production volumes up. The, the, the added cost to, to have recycled plastics comes down and after a while it'll be just to, you know, I think everyone will have green products. The question is how soon will people have it? We're ready now. And I think some of the competitions may be a year or two behind. Once it's part of our design criteria, um, just like energy efficiency and performance and all those sort of things, just it's part of that trade-off analysis that we do, then it just becomes something that is ubiquitous with the product. Our Buds 2 Pro, it has 90% recycled content uh, in the plastic. Even one generation before, we were like really proud to get 20% recycled content. And so we know we can do it. I went into this story thinking, why hasn't this happened? Like, why haven't we seen more green products on the market? All of those sort of different groups are converging to move us towards a future that's a little bit more sustainable from an employment perspective, from a global supply chain perspective, from an environmental perspective. And the first step is that we want to raise awareness. And so we uncover that complex supply chain and figure out, hey, where are things going wrong? The second step is that we innovate in our company and our supply chain on the yeah, solutions to the malpractices that we found. But then the third step is that we want to convene other industry players and convince other players, hey, we now have a scalable solution that works, join in. One of the things that I'm seeing that's really driving a lot of this is investor interest in the idea that companies that are uh, considering sustainability in their business model are better run companies. It can be commercially successful to, to make both ethical choices in your supply chain and indeed be a commercially successful company. But I think ultimately, you know, I don't think I don't think that we're coming out with green products that have higher margins and make more money. I think it's just a, the market's going to be asking for green and you know, rather than being a, a slow or a fast follow, we want to lead the market. I am quite hopeful. And I also see the different actors. I see legislation upcoming. I see other companies also moving in this direction. So I really am hopeful that Fairphone is not going to be the exception like we are now, but that we in a, yeah, in a few years time, this actually will be the norm instead of the exception.